Hey guys, so we got a brand new event today, the Nations of Hockey, and we're going to go into the crazy event that EA released today as it operates far different than any other event that we've had so far. We're going to go through all the ins and outs, which cards are good to target, and all of that as we normally do on my channel. And again, if you have not subscribed, please do so as again, you're going to get all the information you need immediately whenever any other cards are released throughout the season for NHL. So uh, let's jump into all first. Let's go in through all of the cards that were released as there are some other things in terms of a vote that is going to happen. But let's take care of the cards first and uh, go through all of that. All right, so let's kick things off with Oliver Setzinger, six foot left defenseman. He's 90 overall. Uh, this one's going to be definitely one of those ho-hum cards that uh, probably going to be overlooked. Doesn't have the you know top end 99 skating. He's only six foot. His shots all under 90. My opinion, this would be a card to avoid even if you are looking for you know in that range of 90 overall defenseman. I think that there's far better options. So uh, this one would be a pass for me in terms of going after and investing in. If we did pack him, I would sell him immediately. Just doesn't offer literally anything exceptional. It's all you know all you know kind of under the meta and things like that. So uh, this would be a pass for me. Next, we've got Yushiro Hirano, 5'11", 216, uh, 99 skating. Uh, now, obviously, under six foot, kind of a red flag, but he does have 99 skating. And then his, you know, his shot powers over 90 or is 95 and his accuracy is in the 80s which is a little tough his hand stats are all in the 80s as well and then the offensive awareness at 90 defensive awareness at 84 is, re is really tough to deal with um you know his face offs at 92 you could do worse there's in my opinion there's winter national event cards that are more valuable than him uh so again if you're you know you want a team japan card on your team is that is an awesome meme then sure, go for it. But if you're looking for a competitive player and whatnot, maybe you're going to the GWC playoffs or you're looking, you know, still compete, maybe you're getting into the game now and trying to, you know, get better before NHL uh, 21. But this would be a pass for me in terms of just, again, he just doesn't offer anything other than his high-end speed that uh, I would recommend at this stage of the game to invest in. Following him, we've got Oscars Sibulskis. Man, I am brutal with names this year. Like, terrible. And I usually pride myself on being able to be very good with names. 6-2-2-12 left defenseman, 97 skating across the board essentially with that 98 balance. His shot's all under 90, um, hand stats, passing and puck control's 91, which is nice, but his body checking is only 86. He is 6-2, which is nice, um, stick checking at 92, and his defensive awareness is 90, but the offensive awareness is 85. Um, if, depending on how cheap he goes, like if he drops in price and we're talking like under a hundred K, which he should, in my opinion, um, then this might be a decent option, but we'll, I'll take a look at him in the next couple days as I do another best of all ranges video, but for just a face value, he'd have to be under a hundred K in my opinion to even consider him. Then we've got the six foot seven Mads Sogard. So enter a new high-end goalie potentially. Is six foot seven puts him into the upper echelon of goaltenders. His glove high though is only eighty-eight, um, and his position is only ninety-one. Now his aggression is way down at sixty-seven. So the aggression and the height obviously match the meta build that you want in NHL twenty. His synergies are one T F B and S P, which are nice. And his speed is 97, as well as his agility. Shot recovery, 90 is good for rebounds. Uh, but that glove high is really tough. And the reason for it is there's so many people that are still able to just, you know, this would be, we're talking about guys that have 99 accuracy on wrist shots and, and slap shots. It's tough to have a glove high that low, especially when you consider that low aggression goalies sit further back in the net. The reason why they're so effective is they cover one-timers so well. And it, by far the most popular way to score in this game is one-timers more than any other year. So I have a feeling this card will not do well, but people, you have to try him out. Please let me know if he does end up being good, as I would. I'm very, very curious to see. Following him, we've got the 92, Pavel Zaka. Man, kind of a bust, man. That was a very good draft year, and just, yeah, man, just uh, in that range, he just seems to be, you know, severely over uh, overrated when he was drafted. Six foot three, two ten. Makes him elite and hut, though. Uh, 99 skating, essentially. His shots, 93 power, 88 accuracy. Hand stats are all across the board, 89. Body checking, 91. Offensive defensive awareness stats are kind of ho-hum as well at 90 and 88. Face-offs at 93 as a left winger, so you do have the option to put him on center. His size makes him usable as long as well with his speed. I think that there are better cards, but you can't go wrong with this card just based on his size and speed alone. His shot being in the power, at least being a 93, and his accuracy being only 88 is kind of tough. 
but I think that you could do worse. This might be a really good depth winger card, or you know, even a high end winger card if you are looking to upgrade and you know you, you've got a lower end team. This might not be a bad investment at all, depending on the price. I would around 200k at most, at most. Then we've got the 92 Dennis Real, six foot four, two forty seven. The guy is large. Man, tell me this doesn't look like the guy from Californication. Anyways, speed is 96 overall, which is kind of tough. And then his shot is right around 90 for the slap shot. So 90 power, 88 accuracy, which is nice for right defenseman. He's deking 64, which is awesome. Uh, 99 body checking and strength, though. So that already makes him you know valuable because he's 6'4", 99 body checking and strength, as well as balance at 96. And his slap shot is half decent at 90 and 88. Um, this is a pretty good card to invest in. The offensive awareness 84 is tough, but again, for defense, you're going to really want to pay attention to the defensive awareness more, and that's at 94. Um, this would be a good defenseman card, and I think he might be a little bit cheaper than people think. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely a good right-handed defenseman card. I'm curious to see how if he feels slower due to the fact he's almost 250 pounds. After him, we've got the 92 Nino Niederreiter, 62216, 99 skating, 90 shooting, and then his deking all over 90 as well. Body checking is way down to 83, so you're not doing any damage there. Uh, he is a right or a left-handed winger card. He can't play him on center. Uh, not a bad option at all. Obviously, his size and shot and speed makes him, you know, fine. Uh, you know, it, again, it's just there's uh, we're at the point where everything's 95 and above, right? So uh, for this one, this I would rather have him than Zaka, in my opinion, is the only one inch shorter and a little bit better stats. So um, keep that in mind. But this would be a pretty good card. I still think there are winter national cards, so that do that are better values than this. But I'll go into that in the next couple days when I do my uh, uh, best of all ranges again. Subscribe to my channel because you don't want to miss those videos, as they always seem to get um, you know great reviews in terms of uh, helping people out in, in terms of deals and whatnot. So uh, this looks like a very very good card as well, though. Um, I wish the you know wish the body check was a little higher but you really can't complain and we've got the 93 artem anisimov again this is going to be a great card six foot four 99 skating across the board shooting is a little bit left to be desired as there's still some 80s in there but the 91 power is great uh, or good enough and then hand stats all at 90 including body checking awareness stats right around 90 as well face offs at 91 the six foot four ninety nine skating makes him valuable. That's just how it is. It's going to be with all of these cards, and the shooting is again left a little bit left to be desired. But on you know, if you were going to play him on the penalty kill or things like that at center, uh, I mean ninety one draws a little tough. But even if you want to put him on wing, you're going to be able to get the puck out quite well with him, as he does have great balance and uh, puck control at ninety, and the fact he's six foot four. So I think that there are going to be a lot of players that do enjoy this Artem and Isimov. After him, we've got the 94 Miku Koivu, 6'3", 215, 99 skating, 90 shootings. I think we're starting to see a theme here. Deking it all across the board at 92. I 98 face-off. So he would be a better option than Artem Anisimov for sure. I would much rather have Miku Koivu even at the inch less. He does have better awareness stats as well. So keep that in mind. I think he's going to cost quite a bit though. But this is like a... This is almost if not better than the trade deadline joe thornton so if you are looking to grab that card this one is probably a little bit better in terms of uh, value and what you're getting so um yeah i this is a fantastic card then we've got the 94 carl Hagelin, 511 uh 99 skating though and his shooting is at 93 accuracy 90 or sorry 93 power 90 accuracy Hand stats, he's got 95 deking, which is nice. Passing's at 90. Body checking's at 90. Uh, to be honest, though, I because he's only 5'11", that isn't the only reason why I would, but I just think that there, his shooting on being under, his accuracy being under 90 for the cost that he's going to be since he's a 94, uh, there's better options for sure. And the fact that you can't put him on center means that he's just a left winger card. In my opinion, there's just far better options at this stage of the game. Then we've got the 97 USA Ryan Miller, who is spectacular in terms of build. So he's six foot three, which again you want to be around six foot four, six foot five, but six foot three is fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go any lower. Glove height at 97, positioning 98, aggression at 77. This might be the ultimate build so far in NHL 20 in terms of goaltender. I need people to tell me if this one is worth it and if it works well because from just from on paper he looks to be one of the best goaltenders available and you can acquire him more than one way so we'll get into that in a little bit and then we've got the 97 j bowmeister another gigantic dude at six foot four with 99 skating 
His also shot power being at 98. The only downfall is his accuracy is only 85. But regardless, uh, I think I would rather have him than Paul Coffey if, uh, if that's in that range. We're looking, we're talking the top three left defensemen in the game behind Chara and Hedman. Um, you know, his passing at 93, body checking at 95, fantastic. Defensive awareness at 96. There's really no complaints. He's legit one of the best defensemen in the game. If you have one of the cards required to upgrade him, 100% do it. We'll get into that in just a little bit, though. And then we've got the 98 Jonathan Taves. This is a big one as, uh, you know, a lot of people love the Jonathan Taves card. Six foot two, 99 skating, 95 shooting, 95 hands across the board, then the 99 on the draw. If you have the leader's card, again, we're going to get into those sets in a little bit. This is a perfect centerman. And, um, you know, I'm talking about, like, potentially with the stats that he's got now, almost first line. But uh, I think there's a few cards that are slightly better than him. Again, I might do a best in slot video in the next little while so that we get a kind of a new look as to the the best in terms of stats across the board among all positions but just at first look uh, this is one of the best cards in the game for center and uh, one you definitely want to want to get if you are looking for an advantage in the GWC for sure then we've got the 98 Moritz Sider, six foot three. Moritz Sider's Young Stars card was one of the best defenseman cards in the game for a long time because of his size, his speed, and his shot. So he's 99 skating, but then he's got that 97 power um, for for slap shot and his 91 accuracy. He's going to be actually able to hit the net. 97 body checking with 98 strength, defensive awareness at 97, shot blocking, stick checking 99. All of it, just all perfect check marks across the board. In my opinion, he is. If not the best in the top two among right defensemen currently in the game, this is a you know not a must have, but if you have his young star card, that makes it a must have. Then we've got the ninety eight Miko Rantanen. Um, you know he is one of and going to always be one of the best cards in hockey ultimate team just because of his size, skating at ninety nine, shooting basically at ninety nine, hands at ninety nine. Like this is probably the best left handed winger card in the game right now. Um, you blow the bank on him. This is a build that is almost perfect for the meta, perfect for competitive play, perfect for just, you know, fun in terms of hockey ultimate team. This is a great card, and I'm going to go into all the ways you can get him because this event operates way different, and there's actual chance for you guys to get this card. Then we've got the 98 Charlie McAvoy. This would be the one I would avoid. While he does have great stats, um, six foot for defenseman is, I don't want to say too small, but there are far bigger options, even on the right side now. 98 skate, 99 skating's fantastic he's still he's not unusable don't get me wrong he's still a fantastic card um i just think that the cost that you're gonna have to spend to get him isn't really worth it when there are better options in my opinion so uh his slap shot's almost perfect which is great uh, you know his body checking the only downfall really is his size and on defense i think it matters more in this year than any other year because of how much time on attack and how long people hold the puck for that if you can stop it in the neutral zone or at the blue line which you need those large guys for that is where they become so valuable so just keep that in mind when thinking about upgrading the charlie mcavoy and then the 98 Ilya Kovalchuk. So if Rantanen is the, you know, prototype best kind of build for left-handed winger cards, Kovalchuk is that on the right side. So 99 literally skating, shooting, hand stats across the board. Six foot three plays big. The only downfall is his 89 defensive awareness. And now a lot of people are going to be like, okay, whatever. That could be impactful. Is that really controls and, you know, it goes into, you know, input on where players and your AI go in the defensive zone. So if you struggle defensively, he might get lost a little bit in the defensive zone. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, this card is absolute filth and uh, one of, if not the best right-handed winger cards in the game. And then we've got the 98, Nicholas Backstrom, 6'1", 214, and 99 skating, 95 shooting, a little bit of a drop there, and then hand stats all basically 99 uh, with an 88 body check and a little bit lower, but its awareness stats are almost perfect. His face-offs are 97, very, very good center card in the game. Um, again, over 6-foot center with 99 draws, essentially speed and shot are fantastic. I like having high hand eye as well, and this one is 85, 95. Um, definitely an upgrade. If you are still using like the winter national Crosby or even a team of the season Crosby, I would rather have this backstrom than that. So that is going to do it for all of the cards in the, uh, the new, the new, uh, event, but let's go over how you actually get them because there is a new way to actually acquire these cards, which is, um, you know, the big change to this event and something you really need to pay attention to. So Things work the same with 50 players for a gold collectible, which is fine. But then look here, you have multiple options of how to get 
the Jonathan Taves. So if you want Jonathan Taves, okay, you can trade in the leaders Jonathan Taves, which I can do right now, and I will probably to upgrade him. So, okay, so if you trade that in, right, you get the uh, you know the Jonathan Taves with 12 other gold collectibles. You can do the same thing with the Miko Rantanen. I believe it's the classic one from the beginning of the season. It is, which was an awesome looking card in my opinion. So if you have any of these guys, please do that, okay? Please upgrade them if you can. Moritz Sider, same thing. That was a fantastic Young Stars card. There's people potentially still using him and then we've got charlie mcavoy we're gonna hold off on that one just uh for a second here as i'm going to show you and then nicholas backstrom is the dynamic duo one uh the 92 overall if you still have that card and then finally we've got the Ilya kovalchuk which is the fantasy one which is a very expensive and a pretty rare card but it's only going to cost you know five which 100 percent you need to do 100 percent because that card took such a hit when the season ended and then we've got some other options as well jay bowmeister you can actually acquire uh, with the 97, with the 89. So if you have this card, it's going to cost you 14 gold collectibles to upgrade to the 97. I would, in my opinion. And then the Ryan Miller as well. I don't know if I would do this one. This is 90 flashback plus 11. It's that steep. Again, you're you're you know you're talking like 500k. I don't know if I would do that for a goaltender, even if it is Ryan Miller and ends up being amazing. So uh, the other options that we have as well as you'll get, you can do a trade-in of 13 gold collectibles and you get a choice of one of two nations of hockey uh, cards. I would avoid these, always avoid them um, because you could get stuck with one of the 90s and you've just wasted 500k essentially. Uh, and then here is the interesting part. So the 98... 98 overall Nations of Hockey player item choice set. So you've got 25 that you can trade in. I would not do that because uh, there's no reason why you want any of them tradable. You literally do not need any of them tradable. Please, if you're going to do them, do the untradable set as it's far better um, because, you know, it's just you know, why are you spending extra coins? There's just no need to do that for, for that set specifically. So now something I want to show you guys. Notice how you can upgrade all of these cards to get the upgraded version. But what you also need to notice is you could trade in any of them and look at the upgrade. Upgrade to a 98 overall Nations of Hockey player item choice 1 of 6. Yes, that means if you have this Young Stars, Charlie McAvoy, you can go and get the 98 Rantanen or the 98 Moritz Sider or the Kovalchuk or the Taves. That is why I said that one is probably not worth it, okay? So any of these ultimate, you know, the, you make any of these, the, the upgrades from the prior, you know, the prior sets that you've got, you get a choice of any of these guys. So keep that in mind. Charlie McAvoy has now become extremely valuable for the Young Stars card that still have him because you can make literally Ilya Kovalchuk. Now, if you were going to rank them, and if you want me to rank them, that's fine. I can do that. If we were doing in terms of value and what would be the most valuable for you, I would probably go... If you need a center, Jonathan Taves is great. I, you know, everyone loves his cards. His face, he's a perfect center, perfect center on your team. So I understand that. If you need a centerman, it's 100% Jonathan Taves first. If you do not need a centerman, say your centers are stacked and you put Jonathan Taves in, he's maybe going to push like Drysital. You've got Drysital, the team of the year one or team of season one, you know, and you've you've got a bunch of other great centers. Then you know you don't really need to do that one. I would probably go Rantanen and Kovalchuk again, depending on the winger that you need. Those two are just super overpowered in terms of you know their build size and speed after that it's going to be more at cider because again if you need a defense and more at cider is number one he's fantastic his young stars card has been great all season long and then the backstrom following that would be charlie mcavoy so just keep that in mind guys as you're going so any of those six can upgrade into any of the six so i uh, hope i didn't make that too confusing on you there but uh, it's a great new event and quirk that they've done to try and test things out and i'm excited to see how it goes now the last thing that is going on today is if you go and do uh, you you'll see this page when when loading into the game it says nations of hockey polls so complete the first weekday challenge for a vote pack and hold loan items until monday at 6 p.m so this is going to work a lot like how um you know the all-star community cards went in the votes and whatnot so you do if you go and do the nations of hockey challenges it's the weekday one you go right here and you complete one of the weekday challenges, you'll get a Nations of Hockey collectible, it's untradeable, and a Nations of Hockey vote pack for week one. You just got to do it once, and you'll get that vote pack. Then you can go ahead and decide. Obviously, these cards are going to jump up. I don't know how high, but there are some, you know, the guys at EA are trying to be a little more clever. So who had the more clutch backhand for Team Canada in the juniors? Is it Eberly or Akeel? My boy, Akeel. And then it's who has a better name, Alex Nylander or Willie Nylander? So... <laughs> 
Like, uh, I don't know. And then who has the coolest goalie gear set up? Uka Pekka Lukanen or Capo Kakinen? Uh, and then following that, we've also got who has the better first name? Philip Zadina or Philip Cheadle? I... <laughs> Who plays for the best NHL team, Thomas Grice or Semyon Varlamov? And who had the best winter national item, Nick Antropov or Ruslan Fedotenko? So if you do that challenge, you can do a vote pack. You can vote on all these. And then I think there's going to be upgrade items. I would assume that's how it's going to go. I don't know how high they would be, uh, but keep a lookout for those as it looks like they're coming out um, Tuesday would be my guess as though you're holding the loan items until Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So again, guys, let me know what you think of the event in the comments section down below. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my Daily Hut content. I do all sorts of tutorial videos, takes on the content, all sorts of stuff all year round. And if you want to catch me live, I stream Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash nosleeves12. And guys, I will see you next time.